Welcome to Turn Illness into Brilliance, where we turn problem into solution and illness into the brilliance that is unique to you. Quantum Therapeutics offers solution for CPTSD, PTSD, and dissociation. In this journey with us, we hope to reignite your curiosity around what is possible. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Turn Illness into Brilliance. Oh, welcome back to Turn Illness into Brilliance. I'm your host, Sherry Doyne, and I have um, Vanessa La Rochelle back with us here today. Mm -hmm. And I'm super excited that you're here, Vanessa. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so appreciative of you taking your time to come and have these conversations with us. My pleasure. I love okay. this. this what I do now. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. So, we have been kind of stepping into the quantum therapeutics vernacular. I love that word. Vanessa brought that word in. Vernacular. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's our thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're trying to give some weight and levity to a lot of words that don't seem to mean anything on either side of the spectrum yeah and they're just thrown out there yeah like and they you know, nobody can really define them and I, I I that has become a motivation for me as a person mm -hmm. trying to get well going what are you saying to me like and what is the action that could rectify that right and I think as we as we step in you know the first thing we that we need to touch on is complex trauma versus you know single event trauma now by single event i don't mean you know sometimes that's one car accident sometimes that's going to war and spending a year someplace that is um tumultuous but there is a beginning and end. right you know, and complex trauma is something that's happening day. Right? Multiple times a day. Multiple times a day and on numerous different levels. You know, it's not like I'm at war and, and I'm fighting these people for a reason. It's more just like side swipes. They're just having to maneuver every second. Right? From sex to food to the roof over their head to, you know, being, their body being invaded or, you know, mutilated, whatever it may be, you know. And we have to also understand their children. Right? The These people are adults usually in that PTSD place. That's right. You know? And we've got these children trying to maneuver things that an adult would go completely sideways of. Right? We've got, you know, a person that gets raped, right? They, you know, beginning and end, and they are traumatized by that. Yet we've got these children being molested over and over again, and we expect them to just get over it and live as if they were humans that those experiences weren't part of their fault. Right, like they're still expected to perform in school, show up to a sports practice, do their chores, behave. And talk about their parents as though they were parents. And we also have to understand the complexity of keeping secrets. These kids are walking around keeping secrets, so they can't, you know, I mean, I can remember very clearly when I realized as a very young child to make up stories around my home, right? Because kids are sharing what they did last night and you right. see what you did last night. It's so different. Right? So you learn to either be quiet, right? Or make up a story. Right? And, um, you know, and, and, that's, and that's learning to keep secrets on your own. And then you've got authority telling you what you can and can't talk about as well. So these kids are just maneuvering, you know, in 
in every aspect. And as we've talked about before, then you've got a highly sensitive kid or a highly sensitive empathic kid. Having both, right? Trying to maneuver that complexity. Thank you yeah, secrets. Because let me tell you, highly sensitive people cannot keep a secret. No, and you know, it speaks to me what you're saying, right? Because I was on that spectrum too, where you hear what other people did last night and then it's your time to share at school. And, you know, it's almost like teachers know, so they put you on the spot to find out in like this way, you know, that you have to either stay quiet or present something magnificent and better than everybody else. And then when the child does that, you know, they're actually condemned or punished by, say, aunties, uncles, teachers, counselors, right? You're acting out. You're lying. But really, oh, they're yeah. wild. I spent most of the time in the hallway, right? Because the behavior was erratic. I was either, like, ecstatic, right, to where you couldn't keep me still. Because you felt or, free, probably. Huh? Because you felt free outside of the home. It was more, probably more, uh, more fundamental than that. I think that it was, it was, you know, the swing of the pendulum, right? Because I would be either very silent and sullen and to myself, or just like ecstatic to the point that I was unaware where my body was. I, it was impossible to keep my mouth shut. Right. Right. And then sometimes I would start laughing hysterically for like, because right? in my house it, we weren't allowed to cry. So laughter became, you know, how I would release and then I'd get in trouble for laughing. Yeah, we're very similar that way. I see a lot of Yeah, I would just start laughing. I mean, it, and it was, re I mean, it, I'm sure it was a spectacle for people to watch, right? And then I would get in trouble for laughing, and then it would, I started coughing, mm. right? So I would cough till I would pass out, right? So there was that evolution of evolvement on how am I going to maneuver, right? And unconsciously, those responses evolving so that everyone else could be okay with them. You know what I mean? It's a lot when, you know, your real responsibility was just to be taken care of and nourished and grow it's up. It's a lot for a five or six year old. You know, when, when, you, when you think about how much Right? Because I would start laughing if people started asking me too many questions about my about life. Right. I would start coughing and laughing. You know, something that was you know, which something to change the attention, divert that stream of energy coming at you. It's very easy to But it was extreme enough where like people would call me in. I would cough to that extreme, like where the ambulance would be called to the school. Which I was having a panic attack in a way that my family couldn't get mad at me about. Interesting. Right? Instead, they would take me to the doctor. Yeah. If I had had just a panic attack, what? I mean, how did somebody would have smack me? What the hell are you doing? Get over that. But like, that wouldn't have been tolerable. You know, that's what I, when, when we talk about that complexity, that's it. That's the kind of thoughts these children are having to have. Yeah. Every second of every day. While other children are deciding what doll they want to play with. Right? Or, you know, that they want a popsicle. This other kid is the neighboring, well, you know, I would like to have a popsicle, but you know, I would like to have a blue popsicle, but can I say I want a blue popsicle if I have a blue, if I say I want a blue popsicle, they're for sure not going to give me a blue popsicle, 
up and give me a red hot spill. So maybe if I just be quiet, I might just happen to get what I want. Now, here's the thing. That becomes our life pattern. You know, I just may happen to get what I want. Right? And that becomes what we think we deserve. Right? That becomes the pattern with which we live, right? Not declaring what we want and just being satisfied to a level and it, it, elated if, if it just happens. Right? You know? And that becomes our adult lives. Right? And what's real and true is we are the most magical people on the planet. And if you start wanting something, right, and choosing it, right, out front, that is our game, guys, right? We can put that, those actions to work out front and create the life you want instead of trying to fix what has already, already happened and you know, already been. Right, right. And as you brought that up to you, something came to me because, you know, there's always a spectrum, right? And so that child that wants the blue popsicle, right? And all the thoughts are going through their head and like, maybe I'll just get it, right? There's almost that other spectrum of children survivors of CPTSD that go the other way and they're like, I'm taking a blue popsicle from anyone around here because right. you know, we go from passivity to again, bullying. Right? I just got all the shivers. And then so that's where this level of criminality comes and impulsivity comes in society as well. So it's really like this twofold problem of people coming up. And well, like, I really believe most everything like, is a spectrum, yeah. Yeah. And so. Yeah, so many people are suffering and acting out in their adult life in a way that does not serve them or even need to happen because they're doing it from that place. Yeah, absolutely. Right? You know, you look at the bullies in the world, right? That's going to run in and they're going to take the blue popsicle. Right. Right? And, you know, and then you've got the kid that's standing there silent. Right? right? And then you've got, you know, the people that bounce back and forth between all of that because right. they're so fragmented, right? Yeah. Because that was something too that, you know, in retrospect, looking at my behavior that was so confusing at the time, it was, it was very erratic. You know, either I was going to come out like my panther and scratch your eyeballs out, or not physically, I mean, <laughs> Don't worry. Like too much of an empath, I can't even imagine what that would feel like to physically impact the person. Like, I can't even imagine what that would feel like. But I can come out with my words because, you know, and, you know, and that's where I would go from that, you know, panther energy of like, uh uh. Right? Right. Or I'd be very passive and sunny. Right. So, you know, dissociation is the fundamental backbone of quantum therapeutics, and we're going to really dive into those actions of, you know, dissociation, out of body experience, near death experience, astral travel, fragmentation, right? What is all that, really? And we're going to. We're going to really step in in our in the next episode around putting some tangibility behind these actions. So please tune back in with us, right, as we continue this conversation. Grab your copy of Turn Illness into Brilliance, right? Now, this gives us a roadmap out and some clarity around these actions. And hopefully, you know, you can look at yourself and go, wait. Right? Crazy is off the table. I am a superhero. I have a client who like literally becomes the superhuman strength when she gets afraid. Like and can like just pick people up and move them out of her way. Yeah, legit, right? A little bitty woman. And, and you know, grab you know, turn illness into brilliance. I have my 
Chronicles, yeah, Chronicles of Tegwa. Chronicles is going to be a movie, guys, where, where you know, it's in screenplay form, and I think that the world and all of the children out there deserve to be seen in truth rather than this Cinderella story. Great. Yeah. So I love the cover art. I must oh, say. my daughter is such a brilliant artist. Yeah. Well, that would make sense, Emily. Yes, yes, yes. I'm Beautiful sorry. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did both covers. I want right. to see Illness to brown Brilliance as well. I mean, I have that on my computer now, and I look at it, you know, I used to look at it daily. Now it's more of a weekly practice, and just the vernacular that's in there laid out very nicely for anyone that gets it. They can just go in, and it's like, there's these words, now with tangible meaning. That's what I love about deserve. it. deserve. It's like an evolution from Colin, you know, being able to label our genitals with the proper words, right? Using the proper words for our body. We have to be able to have a tangible way of discussing the experiences everyone's had. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much, Vanessa, for being here with us today. Thanks and, for having me. Yay. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thank you so much for joining us here for Today I Choose, where words turn into action and actions turn into reality with the frequency of sound. I'm Sherry Doyan, and I was accompanied by Cutie and Sewn Master of Sound, Sydney Hemwell. See you next time for Today I Choose. So welcome back to Today I Choose. I'm here with Sydney Hemwell, and uh, I'm Sherry Doyan. Right, now we've been doing this build, right, into understanding and knowing how your amazing energies work, right, right? We've got these magical skills that have been on autoresponder, and today you get to choose to do them on purpose, right? So today we're going to reclaim our body, we're going to set up our wisdom circuit, we're going to go on a little journey. Yeah? I'm sure you've all heard of the Akashic Records and it sounds like something, you know, um, out of reach. But today we're going to go. Right? The Akashic Records is like a library of all that has ever been. Yeah? Right? In some traditions it's called the Book of Truths. Right? We all have one. It's our history throughout time. So today, we're going to choose to go 20 years in the future, and we're going to meet your future self. Right? So right now, I would like for you to set an intention. Like, what would you like to know? Because we have to understand everything that you have in question, she has already moved through, right? And she's there. So what does she have to say about it? Yeah? As you're making these choices. Science says that every 90 seconds, right, we have six choices coming our way. Right? That's a lot. Especially if you're having to go off and think about it. So today, we're learning, right, to step into real time, right, as we reclaim our body, our wisdom circuit is connected, and we're going to step in with this future self and say, what's my next right move? Because she already made it, right? And the ones that sent you sideways, she's already fought her way through that as well, yeah? All right. We're going to focus our awareness in on those feet for a minute. We're going to feel them touching the earth as you get up on your feet, right? We're going to rock back and forth, getting those hips involved, yeah? 
getting those toes grounded into the earth. Now we're going to locate the crown of your head as you drop down into that corpus callosa, right? That's the super highway between your left and right brain, your intuition, your eyes, your ears, right? As we get in there, we're flipping on the switches, yeah? And we're having fun as your body begins to really want to move. Yeah, because you're here. Right? We're going to draw that energy behind your eyes back and we're going to witness that connecting back into your left and right brain and that corpus callosum. That congestion, right, is information that's in a lag. Oh, that's the upper portion of the wisdom circuit, right? Now we're going to drop down and we're going to fill up your chest cavity. Like, feel like liquid, right? This is your astral body coming in. It has weight. So from the inside out, we're filling up that chest cavity. And we're going to witness that circuit dropping down from that corpus callosum, activating all the brain cells in that heart muscle. Right? Second portion of the wisdom circuit, yeah? Discerning love. That's right here, yeah? Right? Now we're going to drop down and fill up those arms all the way down to the tips of your fingers, yeah? that energy in your hands. Right? Your hands feel a lot. Bringing awareness to the tips of your fingers. Now we're going to drop down from that chest cavity into your torso all the way down to those hips. Yeah? You feel the light flowing in. Have arriving, right? You are arriving. Now you can feel that circuit dropping down and activating all the brain cells in your gut. Your gut is your wisdom, those pearls of truth that you've held on throughout time. Right? They're always true every go round. That's right here. So that's your wisdom circuit. Your gut, your heart, and your head working together. There's discernment, clarity, yeah? Now we're going to fill up those legs, starting with your thighs. Right, your calves. All the way to the bottoms of those feet, right? Now we're going to claim those toes. Right, you can feel them touching the earth, digging in, yeah? Now we're going to find your pulse in the big toe of your right foot. Yeah? Big toe of your left foot. Yeah, there you are. I have arrived, yeah? Place you're not going to be disturbed. Yeah? We're going to find that spot and we're going to take a big deep breath starting right from the crown of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. All right, we're going to blow out as hard as we can. Right? One 
one more time. We're gonna take a big deep breath and exhale. Right? Yeah, all the way down to the tips of your toes. Yeah. All right. As we step into this journey, I'd like for you guys to find a comfortable spot. Some place that you're not going to be disturbed. Right? So you're going to feel comfortable to just allow your body to relax if you want to recline. Right? Whatever feels comfortable. Yeah? Now, when we're traveling through time, it's all in the details. So as we step forward, right, we're going to be talking, um, I'm going to be asking you some very detailed questions, right? And in detail, I'm going to describe this amazing building. The Akashic Records is the library of all time. So it's a giant white stone building resembles the Library of Congress. Yeah. Big pillars across the front. You know, bigger around than the house. Yeah. And the massive wooden doors. Right. 12 feet tall. And every magical spiritual symbol known as carved in these doors. Pay attention to the details. The handles of these doors are massive. And I'm sure you're feeling curious about how you're going to open the door. And as your feet land on the knoll in front of this building. And I want you to look down and see your feet touching the grass, right? Just as if you were standing and you turn your eyes down, that's what we need to see. Yeah? And we're gonna stomp your foot, right? And I want you to feel your foot hitting the ground. Yeah, feel that reverberation travel up your leg as you hit your foot on the ground. Feels solid, feels real, feels like you're there doing that. Yeah. And I want you to reach down and touch the grass with the palms of your hands. Right. Does the grass feel soft? Does it feel moist? Does it feel dry and prickly? I'm taking now. Now you can feel these amazing doors calling, right? So you can feel your feet starting to move. And you can look down and watch your foot take one step in front of the other right? as you're making your way to the staircase. Right? Yeah. And you can feel your feet walking up these stairs one at a time, all 15. Yeah. And as you hit that landing, Step across the threshold. Your eyes are drawn up. And as far as you can see are books. Just stacks and stacks and stacks of books. Right? Yeah, with a light coming right down the center. Yeah, and you're drawn towards that light. Yeah. And as you hit the light, Little man comes forward. He's got a little, uh, today he's wearing a little uh, carnation in his little suit lapel. And he asks your name. Right? And without a word, he battles off to find 
find your buck. Your buck. All lifetimes, everything that you have ever learned, experienced, know, is in this book. Yeah. So as he comes back, he guides you over to a library table and sets you up this book. And as you open the page, you can see this vortex form. light drawing you through time to that exact moment where you will meet your future self. And you can feel yourself being pulled through time. Your feet land solidly on the ground. You can feel them. You are there. And ahead of you, you can see yourself. This version of yourself has lived through everything you have all that you're suffering or struggling with right now. They have done it already. Right? And they're coming straight for you. Right? And you can feel yourself drawn that way, drawn towards them, right? It's like madness. That's you. Like madness. And as you come together, they receive you in their hands, drawing you forehead to forehead, nose to nose, with an exchange of breath. It is it to receive your question?
your body calling you home. Drawing you back to this point in time. That magnetization of your astral body is calling you to this present moment. myself and the quantum therapeutics team we want to thank you for turning into turn illness into brilliance where we turn problem into solution and illness into the unique brilliance that is you quantum therapeutics for rapid results for resolution to cptsd ptsd and dissociation today you can choose to schedule your call for freedom